Hello reformers and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. Now, when we left off, we obviously had just taken Nara, you know, and we were consolidating, you know, further consolidating our rule and control over that town. And as a result, we, you know, took out a couple of defectors, you know, the defectors from the Swadians who had joined the Rodox. I have done a little bit of extra recruiting. I have gone to most, if not all, of the Saranid villages. On Unfortunately, some of those were raided. So obviously that is going to make a big difference to, you know, you actually getting volunteers. Because them, them being raided, you're unable to get anything from there. So I was able to get about 50, I think. Yes, 50 Saranid recruits. And they've all leveled up into footmen now. So not, not particularly high level because obviously I was just running around and... Eventually, you know, they just leveled up from our trainer skill. And then I went over to the territory surrounding Dirim, and I thought to myself, okay, this used to be Swadian territory, so I'm going to go around the villages, see if I can get some Swadian units, because obviously the Swadians are no longer in the game, technically. I mean, their, their kingdom has been eliminated and is no longer on the faction relations or anything like that, so that's good. And so I went there. And most of the villages of the Saranids have been raided as well. So, yeah, a bit of a bit of a difficulty to try and get Swadian units now because obviously the Rodox are at war against us, and that of course then basically makes it impossible for us to recruit units from those villages. Obviously, I don't have any extra relation with them. I think if you have a good amount of relation with a particular village, like I don't know, five, ten, fifteen, or something like that then you are able to still recruit from that village. But if you're at zero, like I am, then obviously that's going to be very difficult to do. Anyway, now what we have right here is a very, very easy vassal. This guy was just literally deciding one way or another whether he should gang up on our Saranid vassal next but next to us and uh, who is it again it's it's emir ganawa or emir uh it's emir hamazan or something along those lines and well he was fighting a vassal and i decided hey you know what i'm gonna go and see what asugan castle's doing and so he was fighting right outside asugan castle and i thought to myself yeah i'm gonna go and help him it seemed as though he was absolutely fine though so i basically just left him to his own devices and instead i went after the person that maybe would have intervened in the situation now i am taking my supplementary force on this particular expedition because we I actually don't really need to level up anyone else. I mean, my Mamluks are max level. My, well, my two Swadian Knights, hilariously enough. I have two Swadian Knights now from just trainer skill, literally. And otherwise, I have obviously a couple of Master Archers. And I obviously have some Saranid Guards as well. But, well, they don't level up anymore. So the experience is going completely to waste. So I decided... It would be about time for us to maybe do a little bit to get these guys leveled up as well. So as you can see here, I have an absolutely full party. I have 37 of these veteran footmen here. I'm gonna continue getting horsemen, I think. I don't exactly know whether the guards are worth it, to be honest. So I'm not entirely sure whether we're gonna be taking those. Anyway, what we can do right here is we can swap out three of these for three horsemen if we so desire because obviously they do become each other so it's not really necessary for us to kind of stick around there I guess and I guess I could just swap out this footman here and get that master archer I mean why not I, I guess it kind of defeats the purpose of taking the lower levels isn't it because obviously they need experience and taking something that has already leveled up to its max is kind of defeating the purpose of taking those low levels to gain said experience. Anyway, here is a Sugan castle. It has only 42. I remember when we were here last, there was only 20 in the garrison, so they've done a little bit of reinforcement. But as far as I'm aware, this is the last ladder castle that the Kurgits have available for us, and I felt like you know what, this is the only only opportunity we're going to have, really, because if we are unable to take anything else due to it being a siege tower, due to Sanjar Khan, you know, wanting to say hi, 
then this is going to be our final chance for us to make any kind of headway here. Now, do bear in mind, I have literally no archers whatsoever. So I am going to rely very heavily on our infantry. And I'm actually just going to charge everyone in. I'm actually just going to charge everyone in, with the exception of the archers, of course. Oh, yeah, by the way, all of my difficulty settings, they are all maximum. They are all what you can be, you know, just absolutely maximum. You can actually see my difficulty settings at the very beginning of this series, if you so desire. In part one, I believe I show the difficulty settings in the first minute of that video. So, yes, no need to... You know, no need to ask me about it or anything like that. I've received a number of private messages and things like that asking me what my difficulty is. Well, you can check it out. You can check it out yourself. There's, there's been no changes to it whatsoever. And, well, it's kind of obvious that there haven't been any changes because we're still losing a lot of units every single time we go into battle. I mean, if I changed it, then you think I would have told you, right? Yeah, I would have easily told you. I mean, you know that I do that, right? I tell you. Mm, I've changed my damage modifiers this way. I've changed my, you know, combat AI or whatever. I never actually changed my combat AI, but, you know, I just thought I'd give you a bit of an example there. But, yeah, don't really see the necessity to ask me about it, considering I did actually say at the very beginning. Well, never mind. I've told you now that you can go to part one and check it out. Anyway, we are ready to take this, I very much hope, because, I mean, I've just lost a bunch of units, haven't I? I've just lost nine units, and there's only 42 here. I mean, you'd think that we'd be able to take this, no problem at all, without having any casualties whatsoever. But, again, my difficulty is pretty high, so it's going to, obviously, impact how effective my units are. Obviously, I'm not using the greatest units, but the enemy doesn't seem to have the greatest units either. I mean, yeah, they have a couple of lancers, they have a few horsemen, they have some horse archers and things like that, but they're not the best. I mean, well, obviously the lancers are the best, but in general, they don't really have the best, you know, they don't, they're, they're not Nord Huskals, you know, they're not Swadian knights, they're not Vagir archers or marksmen or whatever they are. And yeah, they're just, you know, regular Kyrgyz units, and that's absolutely fine, but yeah, they wouldn't be dying if I was playing on a lower difficulty, basically. My my units would not be dying like this. So, that is... Yeah, that is that. That is that dealt with, at least. And we are going to attain victory. Yes, okay, where, where is the final... Where are the final units? Are they going to be annoying? I have a feeling that they might be annoying by hiding in the rooftops. That would be pretty bad, I think. Yeah, it, it seems like... Wait a minute, where are my... Where are my units? Okay, it seems like there's something weird going on. Okay, oh, no, oh, I'm being shot. Where am I being shot from? Up there, I assume? No, oh, it seems like my units are running around. Oh, where are they? Ah, there he is. I see him. Okay, excellent. Yes, he's uh, actually attempting to... Whoa. Whoa, okay. Barney, really? You have taken a rather grievous wound there. That's not very nice. Yeah, look at that. Look at that spear right in the chest. Right in the chest. That is crazy. He would have died if I didn't have this armor, by the way, because this armor is actually pretty good in terms of body armor. And I'm pretty sure he would have died if I was still wearing my old armor. So it just shows the importance of getting some good armor. But even so, you know, the armor is very, very expensive, or at the very least... You know, some armor is quite expensive. Yeah, take him down. Oh, okay, apparently apparently I have to... What? Are you, are, are you serious? Come on now. Aw. Oh, are you serious? I can't believe that we actually missed that final attack there. It must have just grazed him so incredibly closely. Oh, well, never mind. We're absolutely fine. Okay, so yeah, we. I mean, that's the thing. We wouldn't have lost 46 if my damage was lower than the normal, you know? So, anyway, there's seven footman death. Oh, wow. That is... Uh, seven footman deaths are just really not very good. Okay, well, it doesn't matter too much because now we are able to recruit the units that we obviously lost beforehand when we were attempting to take Asugan Castle previously. So, we do get a little bit of reprisal there, a little bit of revenge against them. And let's have a look here. Okay, so infantry, archers. Uh, I'll just take the infantry, I guess. I mean, I'm not entirely pleased with that, but ah, well, 
Never mind. We'll just take them anyway. All right, there you go. Okay, we'll just take a couple of pieces of loot. We really don't need the loot anymore because we are gaining so much money every single week, even without the weekly rents and wages from Nara, we're still getting a very, very nice sizable chunk of income. So pretty happy with that. But obviously, yeah, here it is. <laughs> here it is, actually, the weekly budget. Yes. So without Nara, we do have a pretty significant drop in the amount that we're making. But if you if you just look at the wages, look at the wages for Nara right now. The wages for Nara are one thousand one hundred and seventy nine. So that's basically so we're we're making two thousand two hundred. Yeah, we're making about two thousand two hundred from Nara, including the wages taken from Nara. So that is all you know, all very well and good. But two thousand two hundred that would mean that we'd make six thousand eight hundred without Nara. So it's pretty. It's fine, right? So I think that's pretty fine. Anyway, let's continue on. We're, we now have 40,000. 40,000. Ow. That is amazing. That is very, very good. Okay, so Asugan Castle. Now, this is obviously maybe going to be awarded to us. Who knows? But yeah, what I'm going to be doing is I think we're probably just going to try and level up another band of units. Another band of units that are as proficient as as my original band. So I'm not going to try and get 27 Mamluks because that takes a long, long time. But I'm going to try and get, well, we have 13 already, actually. But anyway, I'm going to try and get a pretty decent amount of every kind of unit. So let's say about 10 Knights, 15 Mamluks, maybe 15 Master Archers, if I am actually going to level those up. I mean, we have a couple of them already, but still, they're going to take quite a long time to level up from skirmishers. And we're going to try and do something like that because as it stands right now, yeah, uh, yeah, th thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rolf. Okay, but yes, as it stands right now, I think that maybe making our own faction right here, right now, would probably be a little bit rushed. I'd be absolutely fine with doing it if he, you know, if he declines to give us a Sugan castle. I would assume that he's probably going to be absolutely fine with it. You know what's hilarious though? I don't even have that big a relation boost with him. I don't think I don't think he likes us that much. I think we have about what five five relation with him or something like that. So I'm absolutely flabbergasted that he has decided to give me all what it, wow, he is extremely extremely nice, isn't he? Well, we're going to be accepting this honor because we do have a number of things coming up here. I could also stockpile a bunch of units in here as well. So if I need to, I can just very easily come here and get some units. But let's see actually what's going on. Oh, there's a Mir Hamazan once again. All right. Hmm. I'm probably going to... Let's actually just see real quick what happens. Well, okay. It seems like they're running away. Very strange. I am very, very perplexed as to why the Saranids were running away from this. But... Okay, maybe now I get it. He doesn't really have a very good army, that fellow. And who's that? That is Kramuk Noyan. Okay, we need to... Well, we need to engage very, very quickly here. Because if Kramuk Noyan comes over here, then we're going to have a very, very big problem. Because that guy has about 110 units. And I do not want to fight 110 units plus the units that they already have here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do it the old fashioned way and we're just going to divide and conquer a little bit and see where it leads us. But I am laying the foundations, shall we say. I am laying the foundations for our faction. And once the faction is created, no doubt we are going to have a very, very nice siege spree going on and hopefully we'll be able to take quite a few things of our enemies in quick succession so that they won't know what hit them and hopefully we'll be able to get them weakened as a result because they're going to throw themselves at the walls aren't they they're going to throw themselves at the walls of whatever fief we decide to take whichever is the weakest of course and well they're probably going to have a really really big problem as a result so if we can do that if we can make all of these preparations and lay the foundations for the absolute slaughter of whatever faction we end up going against in terms of war, then this is going to be, yeah, it's going to be pretty epic, actually, I think, because we are just going to absolutely 
Well, hopefully we're going to destroy whoever it is. That's basically it. Hopefully we're going to destroy whoever it is. Okay, now, this is a problem. This is indeed a problem. This is very mountainous, isn't it? I'm actually really surprised that we're fighting on such a mountainous map. Obviously, we are technically in the mountains as we kill Sabula Noyan. That's hilarious. Oh, that's hilarious in itself. I'm actually kind of surprised that he allowed us to kill him, but oh well, never mind. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just charge in right now. I'm just going to charge in straight here because these guys are Swadians, and they do actually have some Swadian knights as well, which I'm actually really upset about. Not entirely sure why there is so many Swadian units and vassals indeed actually joining the Rodox because the Rodox are technically the ones that killed them so why would they you know why would they join them if they have such a bad relation with them but I suppose you know territory is power you know territory is power and the more territory someone has the more likely they are to attract other vassals to join you so there is that there is that but yeah speaking of you know Swedian vassals they've they've also joined the Kurgits so you know it's not only the Rodox that they're joining but you know I just found it kind of weird that there were so many that we fought in the last couple of episodes because where are where are all of the actual Rodox vassals and where are you know I mean we are fighting some Kurgit vassals right here but still you know you know what I'm talking about it's kind of a bit strange how they're so rare you know, this, we're just fighting Swadians all the time, and I'm, I, I, nothing against the Swadians, you know, nothing against them, but I personally would much prefer to fight against, you know, different factions units. I think that would be kind of fun, but seems like they're gonna make it as difficult as possible for us. I and mean, it seems like we are actually having some, we're we're having some big problems here. I'm actually gonna retreat and see what we can do. Let's see, ten. Okay, 10 deaths, and how many of... Uh, wow, we really didn't do very well there, did we? No, we didn't. Look at that, we have 113, and wow. Okay, so what does he actually have here that is making it difficult? Because he has one Kurgit Lancer. This guy has, what, one Swadian Knight. Obviously, he does have a couple of man-at-arms, but I think it was the map, actually. The map was really very, very harsh for us. Okay, well, let's go back in and see what we are dealing with this time. Ooh, this might be a little bit better. I think this one is a little bit better, actually. I think I might be much happier with this one, because we don't have to run all over the mountainous areas and hills and all that kind of thing. I think that really did us in, to be honest, because, I mean, just look at this. Look at this absolutely fantastic battlefield now. This is absolutely flat, and we're against Kurgits. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, that's 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 actually pretty bad for us, but it's okay, because we have our own cavalry. We actually have a huge amount of cavalry, so pretty happy with this. We'll probably be able to do a lot more as a result. Oh my, yeah, they have spears too. Not very happy about that. Okay, come on, take him down. Take down that fellow there. We may as well take someone down, seeing as we got stopped in our tracks. There we go. Yes, there we go. Yeah, this is exactly what I mean. This is what I mean. This is exactly the way a field battle should go for Barney. You know, because, well, just look at it. We're just absolutely stomping them. Obviously, we are receiving a couple of casualties in the form of some of our companions, but that is to be expected considering some of them are not the best geared and well they're most likely going to die as a result of them not having very good armor but you know I, I think that's just how it goes sometimes you know they have to sacrifice themselves for the greater good and they'll get cupcakes you know they'll get cupcakes after after the fact as well won't they I mean really ooh, that's a lot of units that is a lot of units right there. That is certainly a lot of units. All right, let's be a little bit careful then, shall we? Let's make sure that we don't get speared in the face. I very much appreciate not getting speared in the face. Or shot in the face. Thank you very much, Swedian militia. Very good. Yes. Okay, now wait a minute. Uh, no, yeah. Oh, really? Okay, they're apparently just doing a round the rosy kind of thing going on there. Oh, I destroyed his shield, so I suppose that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Wow. That's very surprising. I really thought that he or his horse would at least die, but it seems like, I don't know, he's just, he's just routing right now. We seem to have routed them rather successfully. Yeah, I probably should have in the original fight 
once I saw what the map was like, I probably should have just retreated right then. And that's a little bit of a tip for those of you that haven't really been playing Warband that long. And, you know, something that I learned, I don't know, a couple of years ago actually, but I prefer not to do it for realism's sake because a lot of people complain about that kind of stuff. So if you're playing privately where, you know, a lot of people won't be watching, then you don't have to, you know, you don't have to really worry about that kind of thing. But basically what it is is when you go into a battle, in a field battle, or, you know, well, obviously a siege doesn't change, but, you know, if you go into a field battle, then you can immediately retreat if you don't like the look of the battlefield. And I think you can, well, from my own experience, I'm not entirely sure whether this is accurate, but from what I've seen, you can retreat immediately. And then if you go back in, you'll get a different battlefield. But then if you do it again, you might get the one that you previously got. I think there are, I don't know, maybe one to three different tile sets or shall we say different layouts for field battles. I'm not entirely sure whether that's actually accurate so don't quote me on that but if you don't like the look of a particular battlefield which is what I didn't on the you know on the first battle against these guys then it would have been making a lot of sense for me to retreat and go back in but obviously that's not quote unquote realistic so obviously I you know tend not to do that in the series but if I was playing privately then I'd probably do that just because you know, real armies did actually retreat from places that they didn't like to fight in. And I, I guess if you just take it as that, then that's much more realistic, I suppose you could say. Anyway, there we go. We're going to be releasing these guys. I know that it would be really, really awesome to take them prisoner, but you know how it is. It's probably not a good idea to do that, considering we do want the honor. We want all the honor. Thank you very much. So let's take that Serenid Guard and infantry and some horsemen as well. Get an archer. And what else are we going to be getting here? I guess one veteran footman will be fine. All right, so let's just take the rest. Oh, yeah, that's what I like to see. Okay, so that's really nice. And we've defended successfully Asugan Castle. Now, of course, we do have Kramuk Noyan over there. He might be deciding to attack us, but look at how many level ups we're getting right here. Look at that. I have, now have 23 Mamluks and six Swadian Knights. The Knights do take a lot longer to level up, so do bear that in mind if you're going to play as the Swadians. Anyway, let's get some more surgery. More surgery, more wound treatment, please, Jeremus. And his, wow, his crossbow skill has increased dramatically. Very nice to see that as well. All right, so let's just go and speak to Borcha here real quick because we're going to get him some additional, well, pathfinding and tactics, I guess. And then we'll just level up his two-handed, and there we go. Very nice. Okay, we are well on our way to creating our own faction, and hopefully we'll be able to take Nara and Asugan Castle with us. Who knows? Well, at the very least, I'd like to keep Nara, because that's a town. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.